Welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. It's the man with the craziest dream in the business, Josh Rubin, host of the Pop Coffee Podcast, also Pop Coffee Roasters, also Slow Brew Fast Twos. Huh? Uh -huh. Huh? Fast Poos? Twos meaning poos? Um, hello, everybody. And I'm glad to be back. Did you use any advice I gave you in the last podcast to conquer your dreams? All of it. Yeah, no, I've been talking about that extensively. A lot of people have told me they listened to the episode and uh, they had no idea I was plagued by such a nightmare. I didn't have it again since then, but I have been dreaming more and paying attention to my dreams in general more. Any so. different ones than the one you gave me? I really love it when you're on because we can just <laughs> I could I'd rather just examine your dreams because I love just I know, commentating right? on them. I all right. I did have a weird one the night before last. Um, and I was it was the first snow here, like that was decent where you're like you're driving and you're like, I gotta drive slow. Like this is not fun. Like, all wheel just, drive, gotcha. Yeah, four wheel drive. Four wheel drive. Four wheel high or four wheel low. All wheel drive ain't good enough. I need that four wheel. Mm -hmm. Get yeah. in there nice and deep black. Yeah, no, really. The snow out here isn't a joke when it's coming down. The snowflakes are like an inch wide each. So it was coming down and it was good. Like I went to the skate park with my friend and we you know, drove this snow. We didn't take the highway that night. Like we took Michigan <laughs> Avenue back and forth just to avoid the highway. Are you talking about your dream or are you talking about the actual real life now? No. So it correlates. So when I got home that night after skateboarding, I fell asleep. And I had a dream. In the dream, I wrecked my truck in the oh snow. God. Yeah. So it was like kind of like reality, like flooded over into dream world. So I was kind of still thinking about maybe I had a really good time skating and, and just being out. It was fun. Um, it was a good night, good vibes. And then I just kept it going mentally because I'm sleeping and like it's kind of like I'm back in it. And um maybe a little bit of a different area. It wasn't the same area, but I'm driving the truck. And this is where it gets weird because it was almost like a superhero situation. So like, it was a rollover accident. So I like took a corner too tightly and I'm like all these tall buildings and it's like, just gotta go take a right. I know it was a right. And I just like, I, I didn't jerk the wheel and I didn't turn too fast, but the ice got me. And when it started to roll over, it also like started like shooting up in the air Wait, this might actually correlate to that other dream. So anyway, I got ejected like up in the air in my truck though. So I'm like in the truck and it's flipping and it's somehow almost like hit an invisible force field and like, like kind of like some superhero shit where it's and just like kind of ejected it. So it's flipping in like hundred feet in the air and then it falls upside down. It landed with me in it. And so like the whole time I'm doing this, it's like slow-mo inside the car and I'm like, I actually feel like I'm like in the car and it's like rotating. Then it lands and miraculously I walked, I crawled out of the car unscratched. And when I looked at the truck, it was completely like the driver and passenger seat were barely caved in, but like the rest of the truck was totaled. So First it was of all, like, you didn't have your seatbelt on. No. It's a click it or ticket, buddy. <laughs> no, that was also part of it. Yeah, I did not in the stream have my seatbelt on. <laughs> And that's a big deal. Imagine if you got um, ticketed in your dream. The cop was just like, you piece of shit. Yeah. Like, if you I, ever I remember, <laughs> if you ever dream and you're dream. drinking and driving, you're just an asshole. Like, someone pulls you over. Imagine you get a ticket in your dream. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> in your dream. I don't do that in real life or in my dream. No, I guess. I don't know. I could in my dream. I, uh, the weird thing is I woke up and genuinely thought I wrecked my truck. Damn. Like, I had to go look at it out in outside like i had to go visually check that i didn't have an axe like it was so real of a feeling of a dream like it was unreal in the physics of it were like not real like boom like you know like there was no way that that rollover could have actually logically physically with physics you know happened that way but the momentum and everything was all off but it was like a crazy well, roller coaster ride felt instead like of trying to analyze your dream do you ever you practice you're you told me before you practice meditation a little bit as well too right i tried to like talk to dead relatives 
during wait, meditation wait, recently. Wait, what? Yeah, dude. That's not how nuts. meditation works, man. It's not day of the dead. You can't talk to your dead relatives through meditation. Yeah, you can. You no, can. I, you need I, it. I, you I can. Yeah. There's no. There's I, well, no there's this girl. Way. I don't remember her name. She's is her name cool. Sunflower? Oh. Is her name Rainbow? Is her name anything it, above the elements? <laughs> it's very along those lines. Oh, Jesus Christ. I have some literature somewhere from her, but I'm supposed to follow up with a mini session to. I don't want to call how much are you paying how much are you paying <laughs> 50 bucks Jesus Christ no this she's a scammer don't do it it's like when it, this is what I don't like about like um some tarot card readers or some people that'll try to read your future they'll be like you had a mother and you're like yes they go yes. And, the, and her name was this and you're like yes it's like don't you know what your mother is don't you know your mother's name don't you know your family life why don't they tell you something you don't fucking know like am I going to win the fucking powerball the best tarot card reading I ever got was on air. The guy told me, he goes, be careful in November. Your knee is going to go out. Everything he called, he's gotten correct. Okay. Really? He said, make sure that someone, one of my family members, someone close to me, go gets their prostate checked. They did. They found like a small, like kind of tumorous type thing, got those removed. Then he also called, like, he was like, by the year 2024, your podcast is going to be huge. And I was like, 2024 i added up i've always said i only i didn't want to live to be past 26 mm -hmm. I, as a joke 2024 is i'll be 26 so it's like <laughs> imagine that my podcast gets big because i kill myself no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Um, but it, it, there's there's something to not. that but we look at the point like I, i'm back to the point of meditation for instance when i think yeah. your brain has it's a important. lot to unlock about it and i think it's more about the ideas of what maybe you can probably morph the physics around you such as physical objects around you these cellular things that are inside of these chemical compounds that are in your four walls that you're staring at your closet your shirt your phone your computer i think you can truly like change the chemical compound of those things with your brain but i think your dreams are another state of your brain which is like a dream world or what might be considered an afterlife well i see what you're saying there um well it's all just your perception too so a lot of it does have to do with what's going on in your brain the power there some of it's unknown um however i do think um and i did make a film about you're talking about making a film man um i have to dig this one up I have it here. I'll share. I have some films to share with you that I made in uh, college. They were pretty trippy. This one especially was about DMT. Um, and DMT is actually what you are tripping on when you're dreaming. Um, it's in the center of your brain and your yeah, penile gland. Yeah, it's right before you die. Yeah, well, that too. It floods your system. And so that's the euphoria that people often think of when they're in the dream world. And they either go with it and die or they come back, snap out of it. But the DMT is in all of us. And it's also in like hundreds of living things around the world and can be made out of the root uh, barks of many different plants that are illegal in America for no reason. <laughs> um, you know, and DMT isn't just the ayahuasca drink, which people talk about. It's about, it's also like you smoke it, but you really, it's very strong. So you take like a couple puffs and like you can lie down for a half hour and have a dream basically. <laughs> well, usually either shit or you throw up. Uh, Ron White. Um, I've seen someone throw up. Now that's because they're impure. So if they had alcohol in their system or like they eat a lot of bad food, like processed foods and like they have like a big full belly, like you should go into it kind of having fasted and having a cleansed system. And if you do DMT correctly, then you could actually, I've, I've seen people, you know, when I was younger, shit, I haven't done this in a decade but when i did try it um yeah it was really cool and i had some crazy shit where i saw like the py pyramids being built in hieroglyphics i like understood them and it was like some crazy shit where i talked to my dog and he was god it was wait like, hold on up. your dmt trip yeah those are cooler than my dreams well tell me your dmt trip <laughs> well the one cool one that stuck with me through all these years was what i was just saying i was uh the first time i ever really blasted off as they call it was on dmt and um you know i got two three puffs of it and like just held them in the lungs really hard and just laid back on the couch and what i saw was back to ancient egypt and i literally saw the fabric of the couch that i was looking at morph into hieroglyphics and they started moving and talking to me and i could understand what they meant in these picture words and then those started moving in a fast pattern like 
like crazy. And then I kind of like fell into it. And then when I fell into it, I started seeing pyramids being built by people who might have been ancestors of mine, I guess. I don't know the Jewish. You're part Egyptian, came. right? No, Jewish. So the slaves, <laughs> I don't know. Actually, they defunct that. The Jews didn't build the pyramids, maybe. I don't know. But um, back then, I've learned a lot about that throughout my family and my upbringing. So, um, you know, just just maybe have some deep, you know, I have a lot of, I've, I've, I've learned a lot about it, you know, about that time period. And so I don't know, that it unleashed this part of my mind, or maybe I was speaking to, because they say that if DMT can help you speak to a higher power, if used correctly. I just think it's so, your brain tripping on drugs, man. I don't know if it's a it is, central But problem. once you're in that state of heightened awareness, then you may be more perceptive to uh, messages from other um, dimensions. Or it just might be your brain going nuts, much like when you, someone's about to drown or someone's losing oxygen, their brain starts seeing a bunch of shit yeah. because their brain's not functioning at full level anymore. Oh, it's pretty cool stuff. I'll tell you that. Um, and yeah, so I saw the pyramids getting built and then like all this crazy stuff. And then someone knocked at the door and that's what snapped me out of it. And it really kind of ruined the end of the DMT trip. But that was my best high off that. I Do you ever know. try and figure out what any of these things mean? Or are you just like enjoy the experience? You know, and to dive into that it? one. I tried to. Yeah, no, that one. I definitely tried to figure out what it meant. And I never could. And I don't really think it was meant to. And like you said, it's probably more about a random chaotic mess of things going on uh, in my brain than anything. But I definitely don't doubt the power of DMT as a substance in which is in all of us, as well as all around us. You know, I'm not promoting the use of it as a recreational drug. I'm just saying it's fascinating that that's what powers our dreams. I wouldn't promote it as a recreational drug. I wouldn't even suggest taking it just for fun or to have some type of major trip. I believe that these psychedelics and all these things like ayahuasca mm -hmm. were used in history as a sense of redeeming a person or trying to find value. It could help people. Well, try, trying to find a spiritual clearance in a way. Yeah. But I feel like when you start abusing the shit out of it is when you start abusing it to a point where you end up losing the aspect of what is yourself. That's why maybe someone takes acid if they're doing it every Every weekend they have these bad acid flashbacks yeah, because they've abused the way too much there. yeah yeah that's that and there's certain things i think in this life in this world like these mind-altering substances that you know and like on that note i just saw um my friend sent me a picture from la um i think i mentioned it before in a previous podcast he's a steady cam operator out there um shout out to jaron uh anyway he sent me a picture of legal mushrooms like it's like a Mario mushroom packaging. You would have loved this, but it's like you can buy psilocybin mushrooms at the dispensaries now in like Las Vegas and parts of California and Oregon, I think. Yeah, I mean, we'll probably get to a point where all drugs are going to be legal. I'm just well, it's decriminalized that, here in Detroit. Well, it's going to get to a point where it's going to probably decriminalized everywhere. But the issue is, is that you necessarily want people to explore down those options or avenues. I think a it lot is of scary. I've well, thought of this. It's like, not it's driving not, on, on psychedelics is unacceptable. It's not that's really crazy. dependent on the person. It's just dependent on the amount of usage that's going to be out there. Once you open up that door, it's not. I mean, mm -hmm. people take two all the time when they're only supposed to take one. You see that with Halloween videos where kids are trick or treating. My thought is if that if there is this DMT chemical that is released, you're your brain mm -hmm. does it when you die so when it does that when no, you it does it every night when you're dreaming as well that's, that's what that, i was basically well, that's saying. why so you it was can, like well dreams are always nothing. there josh you gotta let me get my sentence out before you interrupt me um but when you're dreaming, for instance, you're technically there's a thing called a hypnic jerk, which is when your heart rate gets too low or you, you jerk yourself to awake that's because it's kind of your brain going through oh shit we almost just died and that's why it is jerks. that that like is that that like weird when you're falling asleep jerk? And it feels like you fell. Like it feels like you just like fell and you like hop up. Like you just are trying yeah. to like catch yourself. Yeah. That's your yeah. brain going to a point where it's like, oh shit, our heart's going too low. We got to jack our system up real quick because it thinks you're about to die. So DMT, wow. for instance, your body does it when it dies. Most of the time is when it's known for, not just when you sleep. But if your brain's trying to make sure that your mind is kind of reaching a balance with what 
prediction or what kind of setting your body's in. I don't think you need to abuse something like that, but the fact that your brain naturally knows when to release that on certain instances, I think is important. I think there's a way to fine tune that. That's why Native American people always use peyote in these types of drugs to find a more spiritual clearance. I think it's a rare occasion you should be using them, not once a year, once every like 10 years when you're going through yeah. major kind of transformations in your life, which you will do when you hit from 10 to 20 to 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 to 50 to 60 to 60 to 70. Ron White took ayahuasca and stopped drinking. Like that's yeah. there's major that's, life yeah, transformations yeah. that will happen when you take these types of drugs. But when you legalize something all like that, I'm not against it, but I'm also not pro for every single day usage. I think it needs to be a rare occasion, much more rare than your birthday. Once a year, you get a fucking hug from your grandfather. This is something that needs five every mm -hmm. 10 years. Yeah. The new one I saw um, to switch all substances was I've seen what Mike Tyson claiming he's been smoking toad venom. Jesus Christ, toad venom. Yeah, that's, that's the new thing nuts, to like, man. yeah, toad venom is real popular amongst like A-list celebrities right now. Uh, helping him quit, 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 he quit doing drugs off it too. He started smoking toad venom. He stopped doing cocaine and all these other drugs. He did it on a dare. Um, but other celebrities claim it's very, very uh, spiritual and a very a good, uh, like kind of holistic high that like gets you you know, able to get rid of other toxins and other bad lifestyle choices and habits and everything. And people like gave that. Charlie Sheen shit for doing Tiger's blood. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. So who knows what's next? Um, well, the original Red Hot Chili Peppers music video, when they were first making music, there was them licking toads and running around. Like I watched a documentary, um, Stadium Arcadium, I think it was, where they were yeah. talking about the beginning with uh, Flea and Anthony Kiedis's relationship of like driving around in a hmm. van before their uh, guitar player died. Um, licking toads as kids and having these weird acid bends and trips. I mean, really diving down the realm of psychedelics, man. Yeah. It's very interesting to hear people's stories and thoughts. And I think you need to start looking deeper into what those messages means. Now, if you're seeing things about building pyramids or something like that, maybe you have yeah. a longing for some type of kind of older history or you're more curious about your that roots. Stuff, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I am. I am. And, you know, I haven't visited that part of the world. I don't think I will until after this virus gets under control. Um, but um, I do want it. And I think part of it was kind of listening to that core voice inside you. Um, and it, it may be that experience. And then that euphoria, there was no way but to just let the floodgates out open with the heart talk to the head directly without any interference for once in your life. Well, that's what I find the importance in meditation. I just don't know yeah. if a lot of people understand. I think it's kind of like a placebo effect. Like once you're meditating and if you're like, I'm a meditation teacher, then they feel like they're more powerful or more deeper on lock with their consciousness. I think recently I've probably been contemplating my own existence more than a lot of people have. Mostly I don't, people might say it's a pessimistic side. I don't think mm -hmm. I'm pessimistic in my belief of what the ideas are. I just look at the fact of maybe the person that you are is not the person who oh. you were meant to be. And I don't think that's it, your fault. I don't think it's anything else's fault. I just think it's a factor of how the world works now. The world is ever so changing, much like your personality, much like your thoughts, much like any emotions that you feel. I just think a lot of people feel that they, you know, is your mind really open? Even asking me that question, is my mind open? I like to think it is. But at the same time, I still think that there's things out there I don't necessarily understand because I necessarily suppress them. There's thoughts and memories yeah. that get triggered all the time over random shit. What is that about? I don't know. But why does my brain feel the need to keep that memory locked in a vault where I don't think about it, but it's there? I can unlock it. it that nerve, that, sy that synapse is still there. Bring it back to this uh woman that did a guided meditation i can't remember carly that's her name she was really good actually you said, i was yeah. saying star and sunshine and shit and you're like it's something like that it's like no it's fucking yeah. carly yeah yeah, yeah. It's, no she gives she has sun star sunflower vibes for sure um or something <laughs> uh but yeah she really um one thing she said which i do believe is that time is happening in layers on top of each other um, and so some of the things that you're talking about or those feelings or those premonitions or just those suspicions are like, 
I think that there's a bleeding effect between those dimensions. And so instead of time happening on a linear line, like a lot of people think it happens, I think that past lives and future lives, um, and there's a author, Char Charles Weiss, who talks about past life regressions. I read a lot of his stuff I like. Anyway, the point is that if time is happening more like an onion, like layers, <laughs> Shrek, uh, then sometimes little things bleed over. So there's other versions of you, um, you know, that deja vu is also suspected to be linked to this, the theory of deja vu. Um, being I, I know what you're happened. talking about. I'm, I'm actually yeah. trying, to, I'm trying to pull it up right now. I can't really, I'm, you know, I'm not an expert in this, but I've read on it and I do believe this is definitely more of a possibility than people would like to admit. I'm trying to pull it up right now, but there's a thing called the theories of time. Basically, there's one theory that the idea that like it's the B theory of time or something like that, that as we're talking right now, the war, the war of 1812 is going on. Um, exactly. It's basically different layers of time. That's I mean, time's a construct of man. I don't think necessarily it, time's even a exists. measurement, really. Well, it doesn't right? really exist. It only exists exactly. because we all agree that it exists. But if time restarts or the world ends, then what happens? Then time is gone. No, because time was just a construct. It's a word that you say. The reason I say the word, yeah. um, the reason if I say the word theory, um, you think of the actual definition of theory. But now that's a word that's been kind of placed out into the uh, world that's just going to exist and exist and exist until it doesn't exist. You know, it's out there. It's been spoken. It's now etched into history. So here's what it is. Are you, hold on. Do you want to want me to pull it up or do you want me to read? Yeah. Well, you can, uh, I'll pull it up. Yeah. Just pull it up. It's done through Wikipedia. Um, so take well, time's that. also a measurement of distance, basically, with space, you know? So, like, what is time here? Well, like, okay, measure... so the B theory of time is a name given to one or two positions regarding the temporal ordering of events in the philosophy of time. B theorists argue that the flow of time is an illusion, that the past, present, and future are all, are all equally real, and that time is tenseless. Temporal becoming is not an objective feature of reality. The B theory is derived from a distinction drawn by Jem M. E. McTaggart between A series and B series. The B theory is often drawn upon in theoretical physics and is seen yep. in theories such eternalism. as eternalism. And this is what I think all of us who kind of in the back of our head believe time travel is really possible believe in these theories because it's, and then you're not going back and forth on a line. You know what I mean? Like you're going in and out of these layers happening at the same time. It just gets so difficult because you start it talking does, about yeah. the time bending yeah, four dimensional time bending realities. It, yeah. It's just, I mean, what's, <laughs> what's all right? So I remember this one growing block universe. According to the growing block universe theory of time, uh, the growing block view, the past and present both exist and the future as yet does not. The present is an objective property mm -hmm. to be compared with a moving spotlight. By the passage of time, more of the world comes into being. Therefore, the block universe is said to be growing. The growth of the block is the supposed to happen in the present, a very thin slice of space time where more of space time is continued. Like anybody reading this is like, yeah, oh, so you can only travel backwards in time based on this theory, I think. I mean, that's probably more likely in my opinion. Yeah. I don't no, think, I mean, it makes sense logically. <laughs> I don't think the past and the present and the future are all happening the, at the same time. I the think future is yet to be determined based on present yeah. things and past that. Yeah. But then and therefore, that, if you alter destiny? the past, then wouldn't that be destiny though like destiny is that future does happen so whatever you do right now even if you're like i'm going to do something well, sporadic and different that's already also into the future this bleeds into the idea of predestination and predestined there are people who are predestinarians or whatever or deja they, vu the fact that you can see things and then you get glimpses of like i remember doing that yeah and well like or people who think that like fate is our their fates are already determined and therefore when they're going to die is already set and they, they don't they don't fear death like um for example stonewall jackson in the civil war was a predestinarian and you know catholic predestinarian or something like but he would just stand there in the battlefield not getting afraid of getting shot because he knew in in his head i'll die when i'm supposed to die yeah they not for a predetermined death. destination of where his death was going he had to be. full faith in destiny. that's possible i mean then everything around it could just be a coincidence of the factor of why he didn't die until that day. Or he was just a lucky motherfucker. <laughs> True. <laughs> <get> shot. True. <laughs> um, but this idea out there as well, too, what I do find it strange is I think that we can verbally send messages through our thoughts. 
Like the fact that when I think oh, about yeah. when I randomly get a thought about someone, why when I text that person, they immediately go, oh, I was all just thinking about you. It's like, well, that synchronicity, that connectivity or that all connected. That's all the thing things. is there is no coincidences though. So why does that work out like that? But Nothing's people are so subjective to the idea of that being more than a coincidence. It's just very, very rare possibility. They want to say it's a coincidence. Cause well, then it, it, it marginalized, it makes it less important. It makes it, you gotta people don't want coffee, to believe in miracles. Homie. You gotta they don't want to believe in me. <laughs> take a chill pill on that coffee. You're all over the place. Um, I'm saying, but if someone's thinking, well, no, I just believe in that a lot. Cause I, I think this a lot. Well, if like you're thinking thing. about something, if you're thinking about me and then I'm thinking about you and then I send you a message and you go, I was just thinking about you. That is a mm-hmm. coincidence in some people's eyes. But what is that? Maybe you're just somehow thinking so hard you're willing something. But I don't really believe in the aspect of willing something into the universe a whole lot. I think more on the belief is that like maybe you just get set on a certain frequency. I think there's certain frequencies and codes out there and the way that the system is set up. I think there's people's objective ideas ideas of what the future is going to be and they manifest that destiny through the type of frequency that they end up hitting upon one day randomly you get plucked out of your existence and set on every single algorithm or pathway that is correct i think algorithms are a perfect example of how life is i think there's natural real world algorithms that you can get set into what is an algorithm a balance of events a bunch of zeros and zeros and zeros and zeros and zeros and then they pick a one in there we hear that word all the time. Does anyone really know what it really means? I think what people I think. don't understand the full grasp or the full, I guess, effect of algorithms until it starts coming to you. Much like if like, you're watching a bunch of haircut videos, then one mm-hmm. day you see a barbershop video where a dude's getting a haircut and a guy comes in with a gun and shoots him in the head. Like I came across on my Facebook reels. That Oof. algorithm got deep quick. And then after every video after that was people and cops getting shot. That's what shows you is that these algorithms are trying to that's zero, 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 one for the longest time. But it's like that infinite time hypothesis where if you have a bunch yeah. of monkeys typing on a keyboard or a typewriter, how long until they can complete the print, uh, the full print works of Shakespeare? It's that idea. It's that basic time thing. Eventually, out of those inevitable ninety nine 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 outcomes, that one is going to be that deciding factor of that opening up the door for it to happen even more. It just had me thinking about the monkey uh, Elon Musk put the Neuralink in and um, plays Pong. Yeah. Um, and the cool thing about that, well, there's two things about that. One, I just think it's really cool. But two, because of COVID, apparently um, we can't get primates to do research on here in America because India and China control that. And so they're jumping ahead in the Neuralink testing type of stuff and they're going to like try to overtake us and Nick Musk and like because they control the primates now <laughs> in India I just heard a podcast about this um there's a pod there's a primate shortage amongst with experts. these with these speculations on time do you think that there's a possible thing that this timeline is going to end and there'll be another layer of the timeline that goes I, I don't mean, think this I don't I think time is continuous I, since time isn't real then therefore it, it will never end and it never began well the, so, our, our idea of time will end yes our perception of time or our time on earth man well like we, there's a uh scientific thing for the doomsday clock which is that every second it shows the world's ending or close inevitability to heading towards the end of doomsday or the apocalypse scenario. I think when Trump got office, the clock sped up by like a second and a half. Like it was just really weird. They based it off the type of societal shifts where there's certain outcomes that a war or something like that would declare and it speeds up the clock or either adds time onto it or lessens the time onto it where it eventually reaches the, the ending point. And next thing you know, that's supposed to be the doomsday. Well, let's just be honest here. We, we know a lot more about the world than when a lot of these theories were came up and like be on this earth. Time will continue if doomsday happens, like these people say. It's, it's just the, the end of explodes. the earth. Yeah. So what? You can get on a spaceship and fly to another galaxy that's hundreds of light years away, just like the movies. Like time exists everywhere infinitely. Yeah, but. If the world explodes before we have a chance to get off of it, this whole civilization explodes. Everything's done. Exactly. Well, this whole, exactly, you said it right. This whole civilization explodes. This is the Earth colony. 
as you much know? as no as much yeah about to say as much as people want to divide themselves up into countries it's still one species on one giant we're just one we're, and that's why we're all that's why we honestly what you were just saying and that's what i was getting really excited about is you tapped into the idea of a conscious a collective consciousness it's called the global brain yeah if you so actually that's really space, something that's really cool well, th- there's an idea like uh, much like how your cell phone or much how like anything is technically sending an invisible signal up to the air. They think that there's an invi- like if you took a giant scale view of the globe, you would mm-hmm. be able to see people's neurons or their types of frequencies that I are bet. going off in their brain all stringing together like a web. Like not saying that if I hit my vape, someone in their car is going to crash. Not saying it's connected like that, but on a sense of like these- how movies do. <laughs> Well, like the these, beginnings. these individual spider webs in our lines from like a yeah. brain connection being yeah. put into your brain connection. Now me and you are on the same frequency where we're having the same conversation about the same exact topic, bringing us to a synchronicity. I think there's more of that can go on much like in Bill and Ted's excellent yes. adventure. The second one, Love that movie. they create, well, the second one, they the create, great. Yeah, that's, that's- they create a song that unites the world by getting every single person to mm-hmm. play in the song. So everyone actually cares about the whole thing, uniting the world in a sense of all yeah. playing music together. It might be something as simple as that, but it's a synchronicity factor if we get a bunch of people synchronized that's why we love tribe thinking so much we're on that quest for synchronicity it all comes back to bill and ted's excellent adventure yeah keanu reeves wow such a great one good guy keanu heard a lot of good things about that guy um and i just watched the have you ever watched the original dracula he was in that Mm -mm. oh wow well winona Ryder and him were married actually officially and they've been married their entire careers and lives um because they had a real preacher <laughs> married he's them. not a good <laughs> actor i don't know why people think he's a great actor he has it's his signature look. they just they just put him in he's movies got, where it's, he Keanu. Talks. it's he just talks that's all he Do you does see the new one he's in he's got this one where he like lets these like 17 16 year old girls in and during a storm to his house and his wife's out of town and he ends up like sleeping with them and then they like start torturing him and like bury him in his backyard and all this fuck stuff what the shit. fuck <laughs> it's fucking crazy man he's really getting desperate for money after them john wick movies. <laughs> yeah 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 uh, i i didn't really expect to like the movie but it, it was oddly satisfying to watch and i would recommend it i don't know what it's called it's on netflix do you think the possibility of if we do understand these ideas or theories of time or just these skeptical ideas of it, do you think that there's a possibility that there's another you and another timeline that's existing at this timeline right now? I'm certain that there is. How are you certain? Um, I feel that. Leave your Reiki rocks at the door and fucking speak to me like with some science. All right. Let me, let me see the best way to articulate this. So I'm certain that. Some of the decisions I've made in my life, I don't know where they've come from. Um, a lot of the things that I've done that have actually created the success that I have, I would say came from a hunch. And those hunches came to me by sleeping on it because I didn't like making big decisions without having a dream or having a feeling or feeling like I spoke to my grandfather and he's passed away and that's who I was talking to during these sessions. And that's why it freaked me out so much. And that's, you know, I feel like he's like looking over me, you know, with the explosion I went through and like um, just everything I've gone through, even to the fact that he had two daughters and then a boy and I have two daughters and then just had a son. um, You think order, but that's not another you. I don't know. It's like, I, maybe I want my past grandfather to be my best friend and it's not me. It's him. But I also, I feel that sometimes in this book with Char Weiss explains that, that he wasn't my grandfather that he I mean he was but his soul might have been somebody else in a different life and like then you so you got these layers and all these different scenarios the past maybe they're the past and the now and maybe they're the future maybe it's the block thing where it's just the past and now but either way there's all these different versions of you and so like in the past life you know like you could have been we could have been related that's why we know each other in this life now is that we meant something to each other in a different life in a different capacity like my daughter could have been somebody else to me you know and, and or my partner could have been somebody else to me in another life but we find each other in this life and we have different roles but we still are magnet to, you know mat, like gravitate towards each other in this life it's not random and it's not a coincidence who you know in this life I mean, that's a possibility. There's just a bunch of examples of where there could be actual accounts are all fucking bullshit. Like the one lady who and was people an Egyptologist. Share souls too. 
Well, the one lady who was an Egyptologist started crying and screaming in this area of this field, like, where yeah. are the grass? Where are all this type of stuff? And they're like, what? And it turns out she said she was from a past life of ancient Egypt of this certain point where she thought she was reliving exactly. that person's life. And I'm like, I don't necessarily know if that's what it is because that was proven to be a hoax, much like the boy who said he saw the afterlife and saw his family members and everything. That was proven to be a hoax too. I've talked to someone who had died three times in his life. And mm. I asked him if he ever saw anything on the other side. And he said, no, each and every single time. Now, I don't know if that's he's the exclusive person outside of that. But a lot of accounts of people who actually die and are brought back, they don't really remember or see anything. Does that mean they don't have the right to remember? I'm not saying it doesn't kind exist. Kind of. So there's supposedly, according to Weiss, there's these levels of transcendence. So like uh, these masters at the higher level. So basically, we're all here reliving life over and over again until we learn a lesson that we're put on earth to learn it's almost like our souls were put into human form on earth in order to learn a specific lesson so that we can transcend to a higher spiritual realm where you aren't mortal anymore and therefore you are you know part of like you kind of like keep you know there's like seven realms i don't know exactly how it works but um you will keep reliving different versions of your soul will keep coming you know into this earth into new lives um and so the memories that she felt in that field could have been totally real, but there's no way to prove it. So like Weiss, this dude, he writes books about this, Charles. Weiss. So anyway, you, he does, it's through, uh, he didn't believe it when he first found his first patient. He had no, he was a skeptic. And now he's like the leading expert and created a huge field and legitimized something that was very fringe. And um, anyway, these people are, it's hypnotherapy. And you have to be hypnotized in order to tap into those memories in a living state. Otherwise, it usually only comes to you. I mean, sometimes it comes to you kind of like a vision, I guess, but a lot of times it's through dreams, I think. Too. I don't think we're ever going to get the answer until they make some type of no. animus machine from Assassin's Creed that's able to tap into your ancestral DNA. But what I do think is a possibility is I think our dreams are more powerful than we it realize. might be in our DNA. Well, if our brain can send us in a dream and send us to what feels like another dimension, then maybe it's our brain. Like if we think we meditate hard enough to astral project necessarily, you're not really astral projecting, but you're also not, not astral projecting. Technically you're doing that, but I think your brain is just creating a scenario that you end up believing that that's how we get people that develop schizophrenia. Like people can develop yeah. schizophrenia. They think kicking tuts outside their house, trying to kill them. Now, they're not wrong. Their reality is now that King Tut is outside of their house. But the reality that we all agree on, we can't get to that level that they're seeing and we can't get to that wavelength. They're on a whole separate wavelength, which mental health, for instance, if you put mental health on a giant long timeline that stretches out, then you put regular normal consciousness on a timeline that stretches out. Mm -hmm. The normal consciousness timeline that we all agree on stays as a straight line. The mental health one might be at a lower frequency, might be at a very, very high up ramped up frequency with a yeah. lot of bumps to it. It's just different. The idea of the word normal, the word normal doesn't exist. What we say is normal is what we all agree on is the proper way to yeah, act. Normals. But that proper way to act has been predetermined by working forces in a system to tell you this is the normal way to act. The normal way to yeah. act would be to not interrupt people when they're talking, Josh. But you're so energetic, <laughs> you're more than happy to comment yeah, on it. And it. I'm more than happy to love that because that is the person of who you are. It does might train wreck some of the things that I say, but <laughs> I also don't care because we're two people talking and having fun while we're doing it and trying to understand something that is unfathomable. And that is time. That is reality. That is consciousness. That is what every single person who's a philosopher, any single person throughout history has tried to push the idea of physics, um, theories of time, different types of quantum hy hyper time hypotheses that could be out there. Everyone has questioned this because no one understands it. And every time a new theory is at the forefront and every time that theory is more proven fact than the other theory. So it makes me question, are we really on a timeline of discovering who we are as people? Or are we more in line with trying to hide our blemishes and hide our flaws and hide our hidden history on a concept of we just want to move on and get past without really necessarily recognizing that there is a past that we are ignoring? That's, I mean, I am, I would agree 
with all of that pretty much, I, I would say, because I think our real history is hidden from us. And I think it's other forces that necessarily don't want us to know the truth. Cause imagine if the truth is that we killed off a whole race of giants. Imagine if the truth is that we so were dinosaurs. cannibals at one point. No, dinosaurs. they were actual they were here, giants. Bro. There were 15 foot, nine foot sized people that used to live here that they found bones of, and they don't know where oh, they I did came hear from. About some of that, uh, you know, I don't doubt Like that's where I like, I'm not saying I know, that but i'm not doubting the fact that i don't think that we were the first ones on this planet i don't you know i don't know if we'll be the last ones um well there was homo sapiens and there was um ancient hominids and then there was types of neanderthals that we bred out they they ended up dying because neanderthals couldn't evolve fast enough but people also get skeptical with the idea of evolution where did how did we get here you know it's like yeah you you got yeah you got people you know adam and eve Aliens. The main NASA director says he's going to go check out Mars to look for our, our origin story. Honestly, yeah, we could have evacuated Mars and maybe we'll have to evacuate Earth and go back. It's there. not even evacuating that the main theory that's been talked about years before this NASA. I'll play the fucking NASA director's speech about fucking Mars. Yeah, um, yeah no, it's it's the, eerie how, you know, yes. it looks like when you look at pictures of the surface of Mars and they're like rivers, the canyons, the mountains. The water, they have water on Mars. Already. Well, no, what they said, what the theory of Mars was that an asteroid hit off of it and a bunch of dust particles from Mars has floated down to Earth and somehow evolved from those dust particles is us because our atmosphere was able to inhabit growth. Um, so okay. the main NASA director recently did an open interview talking about um, how that we actually we need to search Mars okay. for our orange seeds. So it says, I'm convinced we found evidence on of life on Mars in the 1970s. The label released experiment on the Viking mission reported positive results, although have dismissed them as inorganic chemical reactions. So we humans can now peer back into the virtual origin of our universe. We have learned much about laws of nature that control its seemingly infinite celestial bodies, their evolution, motions, and possible fate. Yet equally remarkable and with no general accepted information to whether or not other life exists beyond us or whether we are as we samuel coleridge's ancient mariner alone alone all alone alone on a wide sea we have only made exploration to solve that primal mystery i was fortunate to have participated in the historic adventure as experimenter of the labeled release in life detection experiment on nasa's spectacular viking mission to mars in 1976 but where is the main nasa director um yeah this was just the head of nasa says life probably exists outside of mars but he says could this this guy right here the one looks like a fucking old saddle um he said during an interview he goes my personal opinion is that the universe is so big and now there are even more theories that that there might be other universes if that's the case who am i to say that planet earth is the only location of a life form that is civilized and organized like ours exactly but nelson starts also talking about how it's a concept of maybe that's where our origin story is which leads into yeah. this whole idea that we might have came from mars which isn't out of the realm of possibilities because nobody can understand how we yeah, this planet we has somehow evolved these little small little organic material compounds to become these things that we are now and why did the human race why did the human species somehow get more of an exception to the rules than other things considering that there's things yeah. that have been more evolved than us for hundreds and hundreds of eons it, you know, I, I thought about that a lot. I don't really know, like, why or how the human, you know, how did we become to dominate the planet here, you know, out of all the animal? I mean, there's huge animals, you know, 10 times the size of a human. Uh, we have thumbs and big brains. The shoe bill, for instance, it looks like big. a giant pelican, but it's a murderous fucking descendant of a T Rex. Yeah. Like, I don't know, man. It, you it's know, literally a giant pelican with a murder-like face. It has a face of pure murder, and its beak, its attack is so quick, it can slice an alligator's fucking head off. Like That's so cool. And it's just the size of a giant pelican, but it's a descendant from a T-Rex. If you watch it walk, it walks exactly like how the Jurassic Park dinosaurs walk. <laughs> they think at some point it yeah. evolved for the climate that was in, got rid of its fucking reptilian <laughs> skin, and got feathers. Yeah, it and turned then, into a bird. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's pretty crazy. And how come we can't breathe underwater? That. Yeah, what's what's up with that? We Maybe it's a concept of we haven't discovered the ocean long enough. The we really Earth don't... is seventy uh, percent water, and we can't breathe underwater. Yeah, well, we refuse to de- 
uh, search even deeper into it. Imagine if the roles were reversed, That's where nice. instead yeah, of yeah. 70% water, it was 70% land. All we could do is live in the water, and the only place we couldn't go on is the land. Water world. Well, yeah, Kevin Costner's water world. So that was like 90% water. But you're right. Yeah, that would be crazy. That is odd. I've never thought about that, that we're like on the land, which is only 30% of the earth, you know, breathing the air, which is, you know, there's much more water. <laughs> Our air, I've been going crazy buying air purifiers because I'm like worried about the air quality. I don't know. Like the air, the air Why are you something... worried about air? I don't know. I live in the city. And so I'm just like, I've been what I'm saying about, is, like, is that air. People are, think that trees are the only producers of oxygen. Water is the main producer of oxygen. They produce more than trees. H2O. H2. Well, like I live in a beach town. There's barely any trees. The water, it smells so fucking great here. It smells like salt yeah. water. Because it's grandma's, uh, oxygen comes off the sea. Yeah, I love going to when my grandma lived on the Atlantic. She lived on Jacksonville Beach and the air smells. I love that smell. Well, people like th for a long time, not even like 10, 15 years ago, were worried about the fact that all the trees are going to go gone. How are we going to breathe? It's like, well, the ocean's there. The ocean produces oxygen. Oh, yeah. If And also, if, <laughs> if we're heating up, the, the planet's heating up and then it's evaporating. <laughs> the water's creating. Well, plant life is getting better. Climate change, the bad part about the climate change part is the fact yeah, that it's, it's, no, it's, it's going to kill human life. And that's kind of the biggest fear. Is that the more carbon that gets the weird part is how the government labels this shit. They say carbon's bad, right? Carbon's bad. Well, carbon dioxide's good for the environment. Carbon monoxide's bad for people. Monoxide. Their labels are very strange. So when they put a carbon ban out there, they're basically umbrelling the term carbon dioxide. So that's bad for plants or that's good yep. for plants. You start realizing that the words that they say, they're specifically coordinated this way, much like um, Coca-Cola, for instance, during the ancient or, or agent orange during the military thing. There are types mm -hmm. of chemicals involved in our C22, C224, C223, C22. Yeah. They're so close together, you can't necessarily pinpoint which one's bad. So if you ban one, you'd have to ban them all. So now they have to individually look through all these things. It's just law speak. They do the same thing yeah. with all the emission bills that go Carbon on. tax. Yeah. Yeah. Carbon monoxide is the problem. And on that note, I learned, I did not know that cows produce a third of all the carbon monoxide on earth yeah that's what the fucking vegans say all the time that's their biggest argument it's like that's why you need to stop eating meat i'm like they're still gonna be there like what the fuck gonna, are you talking the, about the cows were here too yeah they were on noah's ark right yeah so that means you'd have to ex <laughs> make the like, whole population of cows extinct but like no well, if you stop bringing think, them less exist well i think we need to find a way to harness that and burn off the carbon monoxide it's a good way to create a natural it burns well so we could create uh energy from it somehow maybe and capture it's a literally cow farts and cow burps the burp is worse than the fart i bet you times. probably in like by the time they start discovering other planets if they let this one cool and let the carbon kind of boil down a little bit or get slowly dissipate it's going to take generations upon generations but i bet someone's going to end up discovering a device that uses carbon that the emissions in the air and a recycling factor it might turn yeah. it into something else just hopefully it's not going to be the worst of outcomes we just haven't figured it out yet you know like it sucks but it is real i, I was kind of following that climate whatever they called it like all the people they want people to pledge all this money to fix climate change and like the sad part is the big countries with lots of money are just causing the pollution and not regulating enough and then the little countries like let's say like a little island country or something right who can't do anything is just like you know their beaches are fucked and they're just eroding you know water levels type foons like tsunamis whatever i don't know crazy changes in weather patterns destroying their economies but the big countries are doing it and the little countries they're just asking for some aid well, the, they're just like, the theories no. of why they're trying to switch to electric stuff is not just to save the planet is because they're all too cheap. They're all too cheap yeah. to go and fix their nuclear coal facilities that they're using. These coal facilities yeah. are clean. Well, here's the thing is there's uh, Trump was saying a lot in his speech about clean coal. And everyone's like, what the fuck do you mean by clean coal is because that 
United States has the only type of coal that is actually can be a cleaner form than all the others, but they put these certain things, you know, with the wires and the kind of looks mm-hmm. like a filter over top of these coal plants that you giant see. The issue is, yeah, is that man. these things slowly over time degrade and every single nuclear facility in the States and in other countries as well, too, they're all 30 something years old. They're mm-hmm. supposed to be regulated and fixed by the years 20. So now they're all past due and we're just hoping that it doesn't fucking collapse and we don't see another Chernobyl. That yeah. was Chernobyl's giant disaster was that that facility needed to be maintenance and fixed and it wasn't fixed and that's what they're trying to do they're trying to avoid the spending money on that like people blame the defense budget as like a main cost of american spending it's about 20 to 25 percent the rest of it undocumented unreleased receipts on people losing money over such fucking frugal fucking charges over dumb shit that nobody can find out where that money got led to saying it's fixing an issue that's not fixing an issue but more people only hear the giant topic oh it's defense funding no it's not we don't be- mm. we we don't do a whole lot overseas with our spending. We keep a lot of that here, but we do spend a lot of unreasonable charges, small little purchases here and there on doing dumb shit for more weaponry. There's a giant advancement. I bet you there's a whole entire budget. Like if there's a hundred percent of the budget that we know about, there's probably an extra hundred percent after that, or 150 percent that we don't see that extra 50 percent because that is all secret sponging. There's black budget files, man, over six point. I think it's no 60 something billion dollars of undocumented spending that happens in a black vault budget site that the CIA and FBI and NSA know about that we don't know about all that stuff. Mike Baker from the CIA or ex CIA agent who's now an NSA person who's running a show about about I think UFO type uh, government technology uh, propulsion systems and shit for the sci fi channel talks about how there's like over like 60 something million dollars or billion dollars that we don't know about in a black budget kind of document yeah. unreported undisclosed account that just should alone give you anxiety. Wow. Yeah, no, I, I don't doubt that. Um, I think they're controlling all of that because gas is three fucking dollars man yeah, they're, going they're controlling up. the gold and the oil they're controlling you know they're all working together uh, we all know it but you know there's a balance there's a balance between how much you can like on your day-to-day you need to like for me like believe you know i could, you could go into deep conspiracies on anything if you want but i also want to be happy and live my life but um i, I think you're supposed to be big happy. brother I think you're supposed to be happy in real yeah. life, but I also yeah. don't know what the balance is because if ignorance is bliss and knowledge is power, then where's the fucking happy middle to that? Because there's a very scary thing where maybe yeah. I start getting upset about it. We're not really upset. I just fucking laugh at it now. But what I do get serious about is I also think that this constructs the flow of the d- destination that you're supposed to be. I think th- who you are right, right now, Josh, is not going to be the person you were truly meant to be because society is changing so fucking fast. It is changing. It's changed fast. Uh, you know, I've been lucky, you know, and I've also worked hard. And so I don't know. I rush mean, hour in, in the beginning of the rush hour movies, there's a yeah, disclosure. There's a, there's a disclaimer that says, sorry, this movie did not age well, but much like we like our buddy cop movies in the 1970s. Um, just understand that this was set for that time period, yeah. that type of jokes, yeah. because I watched rush hour three. I love that movie, but people will fucking raise a flag and say, then you're a racist. Cause that movie is just nothing but propaganda. It's like you start to see how society starts shifting. Now we're destroying ourselves instead of focusing on crucial issues of making us a perfect human species which is an aspect of just not having disease having there's not really starvation that happens in major countries anymore we've eliminated that problem but we opened up the door with gmos that's good in some aspects but it also leads to a lot of digestive issues that are happening today people with teeth falling out people with hair falling out people having to take multiple vitamins a day people starving here in detroit i'll tell you that like the average Income it's not as bad lower. as it was five years ago i know but the average income of poverty level like in detroit right now i read it was like twenty nine thousand dollars nobody's like saying it's not income. happening and we're just that's saying not that a lot for a full family different. to live off i'm like man people are hungry out here um yeah. it's not as bad as some places for sure where there's like complete food shortages well in but, north korea oh. for instance they had to gather up all their dogs yeah. and they ate oh, their fucking starving. dogs <laughs> Yeah, they're fucking starving. You start to realize that our idea of starvation, the fact that it, there's still people not starving to death on the streets. I guarantee you Google your fucking starvation count in Detroit of how many people die a year of starvation. I yeah. guarantee it's a low fucking number compared to 10, 15 years ago when yeah. they 
were warning about everybody was starving. Blown death. away though when I found out that they're the average we're much below the poverty average poverty level. Uh, for the, the 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 average household income here is like twenty grand below the average poverty level or something, yeah. and that means you know it's cheap. And then that leads to the problem with America's you know it's cheaper to eat at McDonald's than it is to buy groceries. Yeah, you know, well that's for a poor that's, family. That's in America, the thing. It's a system which leads to obesity. And, it's a system set up to pay you less, so you can't afford more than the crappy shit they want to give you. It's a slow kind of brainwashing into this, but it's not really a whole aspect of like. The idea of starvation was the fact that there was no food. This is not no food. Mm -hmm. There's always food there. There's plenty of food here. But it's the aspect of what are people choosing to eat might not be what they can truly afford. Yeah, and inflation is killing us now. And I actually saw that the government um, uh, is looking into Amazon, Kroger, Myers, and every other big freaking grocery store right now to ask them, why is everything so expensive and why are the shelves so bare? It's really starting to wear on these Americans who aren't really getting raises, you know, and even if they're getting raises, I've been learning the raises aren't fast enough to combat the inflation and the higher cost of food. Yeah, it's going to make it very, very difficult where if you really want to talk about like people blame it on a race issue, it's a class issue, man. It's the wealth class. It's a a warfare against the poor. Yeah. yeah, it's always been like that. And sadly, I think that middle class line is starting to get blurred out now, which is mm-hmm. what they've always wanted. They never wanted that middle class there. Now middle class is becoming poor or they have to do what they have to do, which is be greedy sons of bitches to get more money to save themselves. Yeah, well, the middle class only existed after World War II. Uh, the baby boom created the middle class. There was they, they don't like, they want much of a two class teams. before that. It's, it's always two teams. They never want mm-hmm. anything more than two teams. Now it's going to be rich versus poor, like how the ideas and the propaganda posters used to be. That middle class is going to end up being phased out in the next 10 years where there's not going to be a middle class. It's either you're going to be barely surviving or you're going to have more than you need. And that's kind of the scary part in it all because the more they eliminate certain teams and certain sides, they put you onto one side. People aren't going to unite together. They're too divided right now. You're, it's going to be an easier way to be manipulation by the government, man. And then once you're on the rich side, it's still divided because you aren't, being rich is not the same as being wealthy. Being rich, having some money, having a nice house, you still aren't shit compared to these people who have millions of dollars in funds all over the world, bank accounts, property everywhere. That's wealthy. When you well, don't ever have to think about money again, that's crazy to think of the 1%. Well, Shaq is Shaq probably said it best. Shaq said it rich is that you're you're never going to have to struggle and your kids might never have to struggle. Wealthy is that your kids kids are never going to have to struggle. Your kids 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 are never going to have to struggle. I mean, the people in Dubai, there's no need to build skyscrapers in Dubai. You build skyscrapers because there's no area around you, but they're in the middle of the fucking desert and they're building skyscrapers. They're at a point where I think one of them rents uh, or leases a yacht from bill gates for 50 million dollars a week or something like that that's just you can buy a yacht for that much but they have so much money they don't give a fuck man yeah they come here they'd be affected by the the carbon taxing and the going no coal um they don't use really a whole lot of coal over there as well either not coal but they're trying to get rid of they're still gonna we're still gonna burn petroleum products forever um until they're gone but so go back to that real quick i did learn about the coal thing you were talking about in america i wanted to mention i meant to say this Um, there's a way that they were talking about like West Virginia's the big state in question, um, going geothermal with their coal by taking the fumes and capturing them and then pumping them back down into the mountain and then using the heat in the earth to power the plant again, to send energy out. So you're burning the coal, creating energy and then capturing the fumes, turning that into heat and then creating. Yeah, exactly. And if we can actually do that and pull that off, then we can continue to keep the jobs, burn the coal until the, until it's gone. And then we'll have to, then, then they can't say that we got rid of all their jobs in West Virginia. People are jealous because they're like, China has the most production thing ever possible. They have the most, that's, they literally have everybody by the balls in the market industry, basically, because they make everything. But then you look yeah. at the aspect of what they're sacrificing is, is the fact that they have people that can't breathe clean air. I mean, they no, have to sit there with the pollution that happens oh. out there. For in India too is actually just as bad, um, if not worse. That one river is toxic. You can't. Your skin will burn if you go in the. Well, that's river. why they use that one drug that Holy you're not allowed river. to say that people call and a horse dewormer. It's to cure river blindness. Yep. We won't talk about that, but yeah, in that one, 
totally. Um, a lot of a lot of issues with that one. Um, but the air too, 17 million people die every year in India from air pollution. And that's why I started getting freaked out. I'm like, they're like, I'm like, what? You're talking about millions and millions of people just can't, <laughs> they just start, they just not lung cancer from smoking, you know, COVID's already taken our breath away, like literally making it hard to breathe, but just the factories, you know, living near them. Um, here in Detroit, the marathon plant, you know, they had to buy houses for people because they're giving everyone cancer. They had to buy their houses and move them to the suburbs. Um, and the air quality is ranked the, some of the worst in the country. Then we got Flint where the water, that's not far from me, the water Michigan. Um, over there. Yeah, that's only 45 minutes from here. You know, like these are real issues for me, um, air quality, water quality. And that's why I do the rain water harvesting stuff that I do as well. Well, um, it's that's little, that's little illegal thing. in some places, harvesting rain right? water. <laughs> well, yeah, up Obama, to debate. And I could talk about that a lot. That what, the line, fact that rainwater is illegal? It's not illegal. I know all about it, but the point is that it's, it's not illegal. It shouldn't be illegal. I'm an adamant rainwater harvesting advocate as far as uh, it should be an American right. If the rain falls on your roof, it's yours. Yeah. I mean, it That's should be, but the government doesn't want to fucking have, ha get you have free water without paying that fucking bill. <laughs> a lot of it comes down to taxation. A lot of it comes down to regulation. A lot of it comes to outdated laws and the use of um, right of use act wrote in the early turn of the century in the 1900s so um you know like let's say I, I had a place right up the river from you and then all of a sudden i'm like fuck this guy i redirected the river and made myself a lake and it's on my land but now you have no water do you drink i milk? can't no can't do that <laughs> no um i don't i think I this is why milk. we can think about this because every person i've talked to who gets in really deep into this type of like thinking the one that questioned the government, they all don't drink milk. And I start to realize it's illegal to sell unpasteurized milk and they have to process it. Right. So I feel like the more you reduce the processed chemicals, the more energy you have to dive into the fact that you're slowly being fucking tricked. Yeah. You know, and when I, you know, so I start, I eat organic and healthy as possible and it's infectious when you start cooking for people and they start seeing what you're cooking. Like now I get my friends and family and people, they're all trying to be more conscious about what they're putting in their bodies. And everybody's that I know in my life is eating out less right now. And I mean, I still eat out like, shoot, I'll grab a fast food burger here and there convenience out of convenience. I'm an American. I never eat but, fast food. I'll, I'd rather sit, but it's because I'm giving food. myself premium you know, all the time. So yeah, here and there, it's like, I'm not drinking, you know, so I just, I look at it like, is to if, go get a, like a burger. I, I look at sometimes. it like if you're eating healthy all the time, putting clean food into you, then you eat that one burger. It just like, like oh, a fungus, a it slowly multiplies all over your clean food and infects it all. No, I mean, I feel like putting sugar in your saying, gas tank, like, man. It's sugar yeah, in your gas no, tank. I feel messed up for like a little bit off it, but life is worth you know you got to live a little is what i think too so i don't like I'm consider that home. living at all that's not food I mean, that i want to enjoy and live off of i'd rather go to a restaurant and actually get a fuck which i'm going to do at a thousand episodes yeah and going out to eat first time in 10 years where are you gonna go outback um, oh i want to i do yeah, that's what i'm talking about um it's been 10 years i got to treat myself with something but i'm craving oh, yeah. a fucking burger and you start realizing there's this aspect of like that's okay food to treat yourself mcdonald's ain't a fucking treat McDonald's is if you got a side bitch and you really don't want to have her in public. That's <laughs> McDonald's, man. Hey, man, I think that we can, uh, the beauty, you know what? Where'd I go? Have you been to Culver's ever? Mm -mm. We went there the other night after skateboarding and it's, uh, they make this butter burger. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a fast food burger joint. They do, it's like a Wendy's, but better basically, you know, like they do ice cream and burgers really good, but way better than Wendy's. Um, but yeah, it's out here in the Midwest, maybe Wisconsin. I think they do cheese curds. So it's like Wisconsin. So if you're in the Midwest, you know about Culver's. I'll tell you that. And uh, that was a treat. That was a truly, that was truly a treat. And uh, I, I, I limit myself from going to places like that a lot. You just got to so be careful with the amount of processed food that's out there. That's got to yeah. be doing something horrible to your bodies on the inside. I mean, yeah. there's a reason why the and, digestive issues yeah. have sparked up in this country more than the past 10, 15 years. I had bad digestive issues when I was younger. I used to throw up all the time. I had to be on probiotics for a long time. Doctors didn't know what was wrong. Tried to put me on stomach acid medicine. Um, part of it was I was a vegetarian for a while. I don't think that's natural. Um, it's not. Yeah, so I started eating meat, started getting healthier, started just living healthier and eating less processed food. And uh, my gut issues are almost completely gone, I'd say, at this point. Um, but I make sure to have, you know, good things. Also. Travis Travis Barker, the drummer for Blink-182, I think it is. Um, the one who got in the terrible plane accident and got most of his body burned. 
I don't know if you heard about what? that. Did that just happen? Because I did not no, hear this about happened it. happened a long Blink. time ago. He's the one that's got all the tattoos all over his body now. He's dating one of the Kardashians. Was it a plane crash? Yeah. How did I miss that? I a, that was a big fucking article. I can pull it up. I love Travis. He talked about when he was in the hospital healing um, because two of the band original band members died. Um, Dude, he when, went through a divorce and then the plane crash. You're right. He um, When he got in his plane crash, what he did to help his body heal faster, he was vegetarian at the time. He ate beef jerky and the beef jerky, okay. the proteins, and it helped his body yeah. naturally start to grow. We have canines for a reason. People go, well, here's a gorilla. This gorilla has canines and it's a it eat, all it does is eat fruit and vegetables. I go, but you understand those incisors were specifically meant evolutionary wise to be able to harvest certain things. Why are people developing gluten intolerances? Because our body are evolving. People are just being gluten free, even though they don't have any digestive issues with it yeah i think a problem with the gluten thing because i tried not eating gluten for a while it's not gluten that's a problem it's that we add gluten to food that doesn't need to have gluten added to it so you're eating processed you're eating gluten filled processed food so really you need to eat less processed food by doing so you'll eat less gluten if you eat natural carbohydrates good breads good pastas you're fine actually uh you know the centurions the hundred year plus old people on the earth they did a study that people who live to be over 100 years old have a high carbohydrate diet. So, a 2008 plane crash killed Barker's security guard, his assistant, and two pilots. Barker at, and his wow. longtime collaborator, DJ AM, Adam Michael Goldstein, survived after the aircraft crashed shortly after takeoff as they were leaving South oh. Carolina and they just had played a show. Now, I heard his story about this. He talked about like the other guy that was involved in it. He just got a little bit burnt, like on his hair and stuff. He was all right. Mm -hmm. But Travis was completely wrecked because what happened was when he jumped out of the airplane, he jumped right into where the fuel thing was. And that completely caught him on fire and he's running across the street and people were tackling him, get him on the ground and stomping him out and everything. But he had to go through Damn. major like skin grafts and all these types of things. That's why he has all these tattoos all over the place. Some of that covers up some of his skin. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't need a skin graft. I've been burned. It's scary enough to think of a whole body situation. Holy shit. Wow. Skin, you know, you don't realize how easy <laughs> skin burns. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like motherfucker, you will. People can burn quick. If you ever listen to those black box recordings of those airplane people that get into like, uh, it's like worst black box recordings ever. It's like a show on the history oh, wow. channel. I don't know if I can handle. I that. heard yeah. two pilots <laughs> talking to each other, and their plane went into a hangar and exploded. And one dude just goes, "I can smell the, I can smell my burning flesh," and it's fucking, it's just so scary to hear. It makes it's your stomach smell. drop, dude. It's a really gross smell. I remember worse smells out there like eating taco bell that's your body rejecting oh, what you just ate i won't do that we have southwest detroit it's a mexican town it's literally called mexican town but we have authentic tacos here so i can't do taco bell anymore just i have to have real tacos pussy you like uh <laughs> what's your favorite um taco bell or arby's but i haven't had it like i said in like 10 years man and what's your favorite kind of tacos any taco no any taco now I've been doing, there's this one called Cecina. It's like thin marinated beef. I haven't Great. eaten out in like 10 years. So I was never specific on my foods. I was like, Taco oh, 12 pack, seriously, zero. Yeah, like, I'm no. dead serious. Like it's all been eating meals at home. I have not eaten out in 10 years. That's why there's a thousand episodes. Have that? Amazing. I mean, I'll go like a week. I haven't had bread in a long time either, man. Oh, I just bought a loaf of bread. It was horrible. I when you it. stop eating Ugh. it, your body loses the taste for it. My body just doesn't remember what it, it tastes like. It's some challah like. bread, some Jewish bread. I'm going to send you a loaf of challah. That's not kosher. <laughs> no, it definitely is kosher. I have Ashkenazi roots, so. Oh, really? I'm more Sephardic. So I have um, Western Europe more. Still part of the chosen people. Yes, we are. I don't know what Ashkenazi is. It sounds like a river. That's the Eastern European side. So more oh, like... Yeah. Yeah, Poland and uh, East. Poland. Poland and East, and then I'm more like the west side of Poland and up into Russia and Latvia and Lithuania area. Well, happy late Hanukkah. Yeah. No, it's still Hanukkah for the next, uh, until Saturday. So it started Sunday night. Yeah. Uh, wait, what is it? Uh, I'm so happy that Hanukkah nobody Samaya. in my family is religious at all. Nobody in my family cares about anything. Like when it's Christmas, ha Merry Christmas, then let's move on to your shit. I'll teach you Hanukkah Sameach. It's happy Hanukkah. Thanks. There you go. I'll take that <laughs> to the bank. Um, 
I don't know the world's, I, I feel like we're on like this process train of hell and I wonder when yeah, we're we going to hop off of it. I mean, it's not, I'm that's not saying you have to eat salads every single meal, but it's not as bad as people think. Like sure. the people that argue that vegetables are the worst tasting things in the world. I just think you're really, really addicted to the good parts of it. Like it's so hard for me to cut out like diet sodas, even though I know it's processed and shit in it. My big issue is the, like all the plastic that's in it. Those phthalates are making you fucking yeah. infertile. Yeah, I don't drink diet. Um, I really don't drink soda right now. I do like it. I love a good root beer. You drink way too much fucking coffee. I'm surprised your nerve sensors in your brain aren't fried. I did have an espresso at the coffee shop this morning, which I don't normally have. So that was I my. Uh, I don't know what that extra. Is. Well, like a like a spread like uh, like a latte. I had a latte and then I made my coffee when I got here. So. Normally I do it in the reverse order and I make my coffee. Jesus Christ. And then I have my latte later in the afternoon. Okay. Uh, Well, you got to space them out by like six hours. Yeah, no, I definitely, I I basically like took what I normally do in four hours and scrammed it into 30 minutes. (laughs) So um, yes, over caffeination. Um, But that's it. Like I won't have any more the rest of the day. Like I don't drink it all night. Okay. Yeah. So um, I usually try to stop drinking before two or three. Yeah, like an alcoholic, I I stopped drinking before two or three. Uh, yeah, I guess it's kind of. I mean, coffee's a nasty habit in a weird way. I sell it, it's the most dangerous drug out there. The fact that it's the most legal one is insane. I, yeah, I mean, it is legal. Um, I think it's more crazy that alcohol is legal. It's well. Caffeine's the most damaging one. When they did that test of spiders and checked their webs, they gave them marijuana, LSD, cocaine, uh, alcohol, and they gave them caffeine. The worst web that they created was the caffeine one. It was all sporadic, and they just was all over the place. You could not catch a fly. All the other ones could manage catching a fly, but caffeine was by, I think it was NASA was the one that did the study on that, where they tested it and tested these spiders and saw that caffeine is actually the most dangerous drug. Well, Weren't they replacing cocaine when they started putting caffeine in Coca-Cola? Yeah. Coca-Cola was cocaine based. And yeah, then but they, made, yeah. they didn't replace it with caffeine. They just replaced so it with I'm a saying, different chemical. Well, no, in theory, then, you know, caffeine could be almost as bad as cocaine. <laughs> I mean, possibly. I mean, it does jack you know, people like, up. There are people we both know that are very sensitive to caffeine. That when they get a caffeine buzz, it's like, oh, and they're shaking yeah. all over the place. No, I've had a freaking pot and a latte. So most people, if you're sensitive, you would die. Yeah. Um, but that's all I'm gonna have today. I mean, I don't drink pop either or soda. You're on the East Coast, right? So you call it soda. We call it pop. I know it's a Michigan thing. But I'm actually low key uh, not native Michigander. I was born in Boston, so I call it soda mostly. Um, I Respect. did that especially for you. What do you call coffee? Uh, Java. What a fucking that's so <laughs> pretentious. <laughs> Give me some Java, some mocha, some caramel frappuccino blitz with so, a first pump. Mocha, everyone knows, is chocolate and coffee, but it's actually the port of mocha. There's in whatever country yep. over there from the country so. they they ship over bananas and when you open up the banana crate there's a giant fucking spider on it. you're like holy shit have you ever seen one of those giant spiders that crawl on those bananas jesus christ i think dude. i do know what it's you're talking the about the size of like a football it's just like bear, all over the bananas you're like oh yeah. my god kill and, it yeah the ones uh i remember when we first sent troops over that to the desert out there i remember some buddies like sending or some like something went viral of the picture of those things running around in the desert it's like, like they used to get rubber they're like rubber spiders trees. but they're, yeah they don't like attack you though they're just these huge spiders though they used to get rubber from rubber trees and the person i think it was king something king god i forgot the fucking name of it the way he would incentivize his workers when he went over from um in brazil the way he would incentivize his workers were to the person who doesn't bring back the most rubber would get one of their hands chopped off and every week he'd ask yeah. for every shipment would have to have a thing of hands with it to make sure that they were actually doing their jobs. So what they would do is they would take this rubber from this rubber tree and they would wrap it around people's bodies. So imagine you have fucking a bunch of chest hair and back hair, wet, hot rubber, sweat, getting soaked and burned into your skin from the sun. And then they would rip it off of you. So that's how they would get these people to carry this rubber from these rubber trees. Oh, my gosh. 
I had a person talk about how America was racist and talking about how like everyone they're still doing slavery and all this stuff. I was like, you guys didn't stop slavery until like this. And I said, this person's story is like King something. I forgot mm-hmm. the name of it. I haven't talked about it forever. And they were like, what, what do you, we don't talk about that. I was like, Oh, you won't talk about your shit, but you'll talk about our shit. Okay. That makes perfect yeah. fucking sense. The earth, the world, the people that inhabit it. It's quite crazy. People want to tear up slavery. People want to tear up racism. Why don't you go to a country where it's happening at a large scale? People think that they're trying to sort and create it out here. They're trying to signal flags like the juicy Smollier trial that's going on. Mm, oh God. Yeah, that's going on. That dude Nobody, definitely fake that shit. No fucking shit. Dave Chappelle made a joke. About <laughs> it's like not even a not even a good like. What did he put a noose in the park and like take a photo? Like I just got hate no. crimes. He showed oh, cops yeah. showed up to his door and he had the noose hanging around his neck while he was eating a yeah. sandwich. Yeah, it was just really botched. And like the police called foul from the minute it happened. And yeah. I lived in Chicago and the CPD don't play. That's why the Chicago police department is good at their job. That's why the court's handling. It's a federal charge that he's being prosecuted with. Yeah. No, he's, he's toast. He's toast. What people will do for attention all to signal to their fucking tribe. What show was he on? He was on empire empire. Yeah. I'm like, what a weird move. What a weird move. It's just, when I see those photos, you just, it obviously looks like someone that's like, good job. Was it really worth it? Was it worth all the likes and comments of people trying to support you for a fake thing that you created? Yeah. 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 Like I don't, and you know, what sucks about his situation is he's like already in the public opinion guilty, you know? So it's going to be a tough to get a fair trial. Well, I mean, he is guilty. He did it. <laughs> like he. Well, he, that's why they can't just, find a jury who doesn't think he's already guilty. <laughs> well, he's just going for a lesser sentence. That's all he's doing. He's not trying to say that he's innocent. He's just going oh, really? for a lesser sentence. I must have tuned out and not noticed they already fully. All right, good. It wasn't the fact of like, are you guilty <laughs> on these charges? It's that you are guilty. How much time and what are you going to do to make up for it? What a what a guy, Jesse. They're not even showing. Jesse. Yeah. So. Why'd you do it? It's a dark world. <laughs> it's a dirty, dirty, caffeinated uh, world. People are doing wild things. Yeah, man. You know, maybe I had, personally had too much caffeine. Was... Maybe call, he did. Call the cops on himself. Maybe he drank some bad calf. Probably. <laughs> what if there are different types of caffeine? <laughs> yeah, there probably is different types. Well, there are, but like there aren't, you know, like every now and again, we choke like this caffeine hits different, but it doesn't. This gives me more of a pump. Yeah. <laughs> kind. I mean, with pre-workouts, I can see people because it's a mixture of vitamins, but like with coffee, it's a little different. Like it's not enhanced with electrolytes or B12. Different. Well, actually, there is for different I, brains. There's weird coffees that are like focus blends and they put that shit in there. Yeah. No, no, not ours. Not pop coffee. Not We're just pop, organic. Pop coffee's real. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's just a real uh, I got my bag company sitting that, on the table over here. We just do organic, just on the same note of all this bull crap out there that you're getting put in your system. We only do organic, and that's that's our mission. Organic coffee. Shameless promotion towards the ending of the podcast. Where can people find you, Josh? <sighs> they can find me online at Pop Coffee Roasters uh, on Instagram, um, Facebook. We can also online at our website, popcoffeeroasters.com. And also uh, get your rain barrels, everybody. Uh, get that garden going at mirainbarrel.com, mirainbarrel.com. Amazon and Home Depot also sell my rain barrel, authentic. And I'll make sure I link it all in the description. Stay tuned yeah. for another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast.